Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this topic is measurement of dispersion, rather intermodal dispersion uh, of the optical cable. Then measurement of NA, that is numerical aperture. And we will also discuss the eye pattern. First part is measurement of dispersion. As I said, we will be discussing the technique to measure intermodal dispersion in case of fiber optic cable. So this is the uh, block schematic which is used to measure the intermodal dispersion in optical cable. <clears throat> we are making use of pulse laser source. As the name indicates, this is a laser which generates different pulses of light. So this is the pulse la uh, laser source whose output is as shown by these uh, red arrows. This is lens one. Lens one output of this part, lens one, is applied to the beam splitter. Now one portion, as the name indicates, this beam splitter splits the beam into two portions. One portion is like this. That means it is coming out from this beam splitter and one more lens we are using that is lens five. And then this lens five is used to focus the light beam on the APD. APD stands for Avalanche Photo Detector. We are making use of uh, photo diode which is APD. <clears throat> so this incoming light which is generated from the uh, pulse laser is applied to lens one then through the beam splitters splitting of this beam takes place. It is applied to the lens five. Lens five focuses that uh, light beam on APD, Avalanche Photo Detector, we know the function of photo detector is to convert optical signal into electrical signal. Then this is given to the sampling oscilloscope. This sampling oscilloscope, that is sampling CRO, is used. And this output of APD, Avalanche Photo Detector, is used as a trigger signal for this sampling oscilloscope. So we can say at this point, you are taking out the input uh, that means the signal light ray which is coming from the pulse laser source as it is without passing through the fiber optic cable. So this is one input to this sampling oscilloscope. Now the second part from the beam splitter is applied to lens 2. Again lens 2 is used to focus the light beam. Then this particular portion of the light beam is propagating through the FOC that is fiber optic cable. <coughs> Whenever this light propagates, passes through the fiber optic cable, broadening of pulse takes place. That's what we want to measure. And then again, we are making use of lens 3 and lens 4. And the output is applied to avalanche photo detector, that is avalanche photo diode. The output of this avalanche photo diode, which is electrical quantity rather, as we discussed, it converts optical signal into electrical signal. But keep in mind, this optical signal, which uh, which is applied at the at the input of this APD, is related to the light ray, which is propagating through the fiber optic cable. Whereas the output, I mean the input to this APD, is not. Uh, the light ray which is applied which is propagating through the fiber optic cable so this APD converts the output light from the uh, propagating through the fiber optic cable into electrical signal and it is applied to the another input of sampling oscilloscope now this pulse broadening is denoted by 3 db rather it is 3 db bandwidth uh, so this is t 3 db which is t0 3 db t0 is the pulse width at the output at output of optical cable and it is in terms of 3 db minus ti square 3 db <clears throat> so ti is the uh, pulse width at the input upon l l is the length of optical cable so this we are taking square root uh, of this numerator that's why it is bracket raised to one half then once you will get this uh, pulse broadening which is denoted by t uh, t 3 db we can calculate the bandwidth so bandwidth is given by 0.44 upon 3 dB. The next part is measurement of NA that is numerical aperture of an optical cable. If we know the refractive index of the media, then uh, suppose we have the values of N1 and N2, then this numerical aperture NA can be directly calculated using the formula square root of N1 square minus N2 square. This is possible if you are knowing the refractive indices of the uh, material. <clears throat> Apart from this, this setup gives us how to gives us an idea how to measure the numerical aperture of an optical cable. 
at the input side we are making use of a light source we know that it can be led or a laser usually leds are preferred then its output is propagated through foc that is it is propagated through fiber optic cable this is applied to rotating fiber mount as the name indicates uh, one end of the optical fiber is connected to this and we are rotating it then this light is applied is passing through the small aperture and then it is applied to the photo detector we know that usually apds that is avalanche photo detectors are preferred it converts optical signal into electrical signal and its output is applied to the power meter every time this rotation of one end of the optical cable in is done in such a way in such a way that you are getting some significant output at the of the power meter that means you have to measure all the angles where you are getting some readings from the power meter these readings of angles after rotating this one end of the optical cable gives us the value of acceptance angle then numerical aperture is calculated using the formula n0 sin theta max this n0 is the refractive index of the medium apart from fiber optic cable that means you can say n0 is the refractive index of the medium outside the fiber optic cable if the light rays are coming entering from the air medium then we know that for air refractive index is ideally 1 so n0 will be 1 in that case n a will be n0 that is 1 sine theta max where theta max is the maximum angle which is given as one half acceptance angle we, we just now discussed how to measure this acceptance angle that is by um, uh, rotating this fiber mount so this is the way to measure the numerical aperture of an optical cable now the last part of this session is eye pattern from the exam point of view you may expect the question like this draw the eye pattern and uh, explain the various information that can be generated by making use of eye pattern or draw and explain the typical setup which is used for the generation of eye pattern basically eye pattern is superimposition of logic zeros and logic one on a particular waveform this diagram shows the typical setup which is used to generate the eye pattern so we are making use of random bit pattern which generates the random bits logic uh, ones and logic zeros it is given to the transmitter then this data is applied uh, propagating through the OFC that is optical fiber cable at other end of OFC we are using RX that is receiver session that is a photo detector and then it is applied to one input of the CRO ideally we are making use of two plates of the oscilloscope that is X plate horizontal plate and vertical plate that is a Y plate to the Y plate we are applying received signal that means we can say the signal which is coming uh, out from the optical cable and the standard sawtooth signal is applied to the X plate this sawtooth signal is generated at the rate 1 by TB where TB is the symbol duration we are making use of pattern bit generation so one signal which is coming out from the optical cable is applied to one plate of CRO another standard sawtooth wave signal or <coughs> random bit pattern is applied to the X plate whenever uh, these two signals are applied there is a superimposition or overlapping of this logic zeros and logic one on the on the sort of uh, bit pattern and this generate a waveform which is similar to the eye so it is called eye pattern now this type of waveform is displayed which is called the eye pattern different informations can be obtained from this eye pattern this particular instant, this particular time period is called best sampling time or best instant at which we can perform the sampling of uh, signals. Then this height represents the distortions at the sampling. I have written few important points related to this diagram. So width of eye opening, width means this, this particular portion indicates the eye opening. So width of this eye opening, that means from this point to this point, this particular portion represents width of the eye opening. So this width of the eye opening gives us the value of sampling interval, that is the sampling time period. <coughs> then the height of eye opening, this particular portion, uh, this we can say this is the horizontal line, which is the reference line. If you measure the height from this point up to the opening of eye, this part is opening of eye. So this height, 
gives us the value of margin over noise. So I have written in the diagram as well. This is margin over noise. Then rate of eye closing. This diagram shows the opening of eye. Uh, as the diagram goes on shrinking, you can say the eye is closed because these two ends will appear very close to each other. So rate at which the closing of eye takes place gives the sensitivity to the timing errors. That means it gives the value of sensitivity to the timing errors. As shown in this diagram, this is a straight line. So if you measure this slope, this slope, of, of this straight line of the eye opening gives the sensitivity of the timing error. When eye is completely closed, as I said, this is the diagram which shows opening of eye. When eye is completely show, uh, closed, it indicates that there is an effect of maximum inter-symbol interference, that is maximum ISI. Then this particular height represents the distortions of the zero crossing. So, all these informations can be uh, obtained uh, if this eye pattern is generated, is displayed on the oscilloscope. So this is about the generation of the eye pattern and what are the different informations that can be obtained by observing this eye pattern. So dear students, that's it for this session and that's it for this series. So thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this series.